for your pancakes. Don't make a lot of noise in the morning. We, we don't need your daddy's money. Then leave it there. Just give me the fucking belly. What is that? Let go. What is that? Daisy! Just get the fuck off me. Trying out your new silver? Also killing for daddy, huh? Look at your own arm, asshole. I'm sick, Daisy. We know that. But here you are in so-called recovery, acting like Betty Crocker, and you're kind of like a goddamn Virginia ham. Help me understand, Daisy, because I thought you didn't do Valium. So tell me how this safety net's working for you. Tell me you don't take that blade and drag it across your skin and pray for the courage to press down. Tell me how your daddy helps you cope with that. My father loves me. How bad? With every inch of his manhood. I'm going to sleep now. Please be gone in the morning. You're just jealous, Lisa. Because I got better. Because I am in recovery. Because I was released. Because I have a life. They didn't release you because you got better, Daisy. They just gave up. And you call this a life, huh? Taking your daddy's money and buying your dollies and your knickknacks and eating his chicken and fattening up like a prized heifer? You changed the scenery, not the fucking situation. And the warden makes house calls. And everybody knows. Everybody knows that he fucks you. What they don't know is that you like it. Shut up! You like Shut it! Shut up! But hey, man, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fucking fine, right? I mean, a man is a dick, is a man, is a dick, is a valium, a speculum, whatever. Whatever. I mean, you like being Mrs. Randall, you hmm? Probably all you've ever known, huh? Have fun in Florida. Hi, I'm Caroline Broussard. Hey, my name is Scott Farley. Your nose is bleeding. Got a tampon or an inkling to get me to a real hospital? We're connected, you and I, by fate or something. I've been studying you for a long while and we are so alike. Insane. You work with a team not because you want to, but because you have to, like me. You hunt alone, like me. <clears throat> there you go. Now this is a little trick that Reggie taught me. The surgeons today, they like to draw a map on the patient's body for where to cut. Any chance the surgery is elective? Mandatory, I'm afraid. I thought doctors had to take an oath, do no harm. I was never really a doctor. I did study surgery, and by study I mean I love to carve up bodies. See what made people, people. <laughs> See, even when I was human, I wasn't. <laughs> Not way down deep. I owe Reggie an apology. You're the sickest puppy in the litter. Flattery will not save you. What's your damage? Mommy didn't love you, or is this because every woman you ever met rejected you? Your dime store psychology is adorable. But here's the thing. I love women. 
they're a feast for the eyes. Every man has his favorite body part that he loves to gaze upon. The eyes, the legs, the breasts. I like to look at your organs. <laughs> and I'm going to keep you alive just long enough so that you can look at them too. Now clean up. You're not a good person, Drew. You're smiling. Really? You're proud of that? You know it's a shame, Mom? Dad's dead. Kind of admits to being what a shit-fucking mother you are. Oh, poor Leslie. Her daughter's an addict, but you know, her dad did die. You hear that, Gia? You hear that? I, I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but you're probably going to have to be a fucking neurosurgeon or an astronaut, because if not, then maybe mom has zero for fucking two, and that maybe it's actually her fucking fault. Maybe Just she stop. actually genuinely just fucked up. Okay, that's enough, Ruth. <laughs> don't fucking touch me. Don't fucking touch me. You want to hit me? Fucking go. Do it. Do it. Get, get up. Get the fuck out of Where'd here. Where'd you put my fucking pills? Where'd you put my fucking pills, mom? You want to tell me what to do with my own fucking life, huh? You want to tell me what to do with... You, you want to tell me to not do drugs? Where'd you put my fucking pills? Groupies. No, this is your fucking fault. It's your fucking fault. Where'd you put my fucking pills? Where'd you fucking put my pills? You don't recognize me? I don't fucking recognize myself either. I don't recognize myself either. This is your fault. You dick. Why'd you pull my pills? Why'd you pull my pills? Oh, please. Why'd you pull my pills? I don't know what else I can do. Why'd you pull my pills? Oh, please, please. This is a fucking bad. This is a fucking bad one. My fucking pills. Where's the suitcase? Where's the fucking suitcase, mom? Where's the suitcase? Hey, mom. <laughs> you, you, you don't understand. This is not my suitcase. It's my suitcase. This is not my pills. This is my suitcase. This is really bad, mom. It's really bad. I just need to know where it is, please. I, I, I want to get clean. I want to get clean, I just can't, I just can't get clean, I just, I just really, I just don't want to be here anymore, I just don't want to be here anymore, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I scared you guys, I'm sorry, <laughs> hey, it's Ishmi Daisy. hi, I'm Molly Greenblatt, and I'm represented by Glenn Talent. I like the doodles. Who's that guy? Is that Harry Potter? That's, uh, it's Paul Dano. He's my celebrity crush. How was this, processing through all these emotions? Good. You had a lot of ups and downs, but I, I feel like I felt everything. So that's good, I guess. I noticed that you used the word scared a few times. When did you feel the most scared? Being at school. Don't feel comfortable being back there. What are you feeling right now? I don't know. Yes, you do. Feel... Mad? Mad about what? I feel mad because I had no idea one guy with a gun could fuck up my life so hard. In six minutes. Fuck up so many lives. 
and I think that I should be grateful, right? Be alive. I feel like No, maybe there's some weird fucked up reason why I made it and other people didn't. But then but then you 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 sit back and and you realize that There isn't, there's no fucking reason. None of us should have died. a really hard time moving on. You feel this? That is a pulse. And somebody has one, it means they're alive. The guy was dead. No, he Manny, nothing like this can ever happen again. We're supposed to be ending suffering, not creating it. Hola, welcome to Taco Hut. Hi, I'll take two orders of cheese roll-ups, three beef chalupas, and two cheesy fiesta potatoes. Three Diet Cokes. Four. And a steak quesadilla. I don't understand what happened. He's a 300 pound former football player. Guess the dose didn't keep him down. I gave him more than enough pento. The drinks are the problem. Ugh, the drinks have worked every other time flawlessly. If we'd done an injection, Troy wouldn't have come back from the dead. You know it, I know it, <sighs> into the bloodstream. Sure fire. We have been over this, it has to be their doing. I know you have your issues with injections, so I'm volunteering to do them. I want to. You know, sometimes I can't tell if you're a compassionate doctor or a serial killer. Says the woman who just smothered a guy with a pillow. Manny, please. It's okay. You did what you had to do under the circumstances. All I'm saying is... There wouldn't have been a circumstance if we'd done an injection. If we pull the trigger, we're murderers. If they do, then we're something else. The law doesn't give a shit about that distinction. Until the backbenchers nut up and make some rules, we are murderers. Injections or not. Prove that you can take a pulse. Then we'll talk injections. Control freak. Serial killer. Thank you. So who's the next hit? We're not hitmen, we're doctors. To not getting caught. <sighs> no! To try. <sighs> hey, artist, artist, I'm Krista Marchand. You should have come to I me. did. You have to tell O'Hare the truth. I did that too. Dr. Roman fucked up the insulin dosage for that patient. I was there, Jack. Then you, then you already knew that. Then what the... F then maybe you're part of the problem. Because yeah. I, what stop I it. Is... Just, just fucking stop it. Do you really think this is about the insulin? Yes, I think this is about the fucking insulin. You use the picture of a dying priest to make a fake ID. Listen, Zoe, I can't and then it. you convinced him to lie for you and say that he was Mark Wood and that he still carries DEA number. That was the last thing he did on Earth. Hey, listen, look, I can explain. This has got to be hard for you. I Don't understand. you dare. What's hard for me is that you've been using drugs this whole time. And that you've been lying to me again. I can see that. that that's maybe what you You stole right a D number, Jack. That's a federal crime. You can go to jail. Do you realize that? I could go to jail for not reporting you right now. If you don't go to rehab, I will hand the picture over. Zoe, Zoe, I, you have to believe me. I did believe you, okay? I always believed you. That's my fault.
I just don't anymore. Look, this is me you're talking to. Please, just go to rehab. Jack, let me help you. Jack! Hi, my name is Mel Gagnon and I'm based in Vancouver. Who the hell are you? Just consider me a friend of the family. Get the fuck out of my house, asshole. Well, no, if you just give me one or two minutes of your time, I'd like to talk to you about something. You know, uh, what you did, it's not your fault. It's a genetic defect. Yeah. My mom called it the gene. My grandfather had it. Brought it with him on the boat from Ireland in 1912. I guess he passed it on to my dad. Yeah. My old man, he was a great guy. Hard worker. He was a pussycat. A sports fan. Every once in a while, when he on his way back from the docks, get a couple of beers with the guys. And I remember one day I uh, came home from school and the lights were all out. I couldn't understand why. And I heard my mom crying in the darkness someplace. See, I was old enough then. I could reach the light switch. And I saw what he did to her. So I went up to my room, got the uh, baseball bat Mickey Mantle model that my old man got me for Christmas. And I found him passed out in the bathtub and I tattooed him. Needless to say, after that, every time I came home from school, the house was lit up like Ebbetsfield. And my dad never drank again. The reason I say this is, well, you want to drink, drink. I ever hear that you laid your hand on that little girl again. Me and Mr. Mantle are going to pay you a visit, my friend. Are you done? Yeah. I'm done. Good. Going on your way out, send that little whore back in here. I haven't finished with her yet. Scott Garland. It's fine, but you're paying for the hotel and that's mini bar whiskey, so it'll cost you about a year of your kids' school fees. Best enjoy it then. Hmm. Things haven't been great. Me and the missus. We haven't had sex for a year and a half. Anthony, I don't care. It's a sickness. I'm an addict. I can't help it. It's like diabetes. Maybe you should stop shoving your dick in so many cakes then. You're a very cold woman, you know? Anthony, I'm not going to feel sorry for you for cheating on your wife. I have a decent book, okay? I know I've messed around a little bit, but who hasn't? I don't deserve to be crucified for it. Seriously, this shit is terrifying, and it goes both ways. I've had to deal with my fair share of clumsy passes from drunken women, but you don't see me calling Rupert Murdoch, do you? Are you done? I'm just saying, if I were a woman, we wouldn't be having this conversation. What's the difference? What's the difference? I would say the main difference is that you haven't been told since you were 11 that every male encounter has the potential to rape or murder you. Followed by a life of pre-sexualization catcalls and slut-shaming that fills you with so much guilt and shame so that when you're having sex with a kid who starts choking you during sex, either with his hands or his penis, because he saw it in a bunch of porn, that you assume that it must have been you who got it wrong. So every single time there's a hand on your thigh or an inappropriate comment made, you swallow it. Until one day the world says, hey, maybe actually all that crap wasn't totally your fault, and the relief that you feel is so great that that shit just pours out of you like a tsunami, and yes, like a tsunami, innocent people drown. I am sorry, though that you had to deal with women you didn't deem attractive enough trying to grab your ass. I appreciate that life has its challenges. What? You don't give a fuck, do you? Should I? I do love her, you know, my wife. And I, of course, love my kids. You know that thing that I said about not having sex for a year and a half? That was a lie. We have sex all the time, and it's great. It's just sometimes I like to fuck people that I don't love to. That's maybe the most honest thing you've ever said to me. I'm gonna make some calls, run up some photographers. You stay here, get your head straight. I'll be in touch. Why haven't you tried to have sex with me? Excuse me? If it's such an addiction, why haven't you tried to have sex with me? Um, 
What, would you like me to? No. I can if you want. No, I do not want. Thank you. I will be in touch. You're complicated. You've got all the stuff going on behind the eyes. I don't even know where to start. Of course, I'd love to have sex with you, but you're not simple. You only try to have sex with simple women? You want me to be completely honest? Why not? I'm intimidated by you. And why is that? Because I know you're more fucked up than I am. When you do it, does it make you feel better or worse? Both. Hey, I'm Hilary Workowski. How much time are you facing? Come on, I don't give a shit. You know my situation. Can't be worse than me. You ever done time before? Yo, why are you gonna be such a dick for? Are you kidding me? Oh, I mean, I mean, it's not like I was expecting us to be. <laughs> Look at you, you're a joke. You're drunk as shit now. You want to get real? Oh, ho, ho. don't fucking flatter yourself. I'm just killing time, okay? And don't start getting an attitude with me like you think you're better than me and shit. Because then we're actually going to have a problem. I am better than you. Dude, you're fucked. No, you're fucked. The second you get a chance to, you got yourself fucked. Because that is you. Oh, give me a break. You're not my fucking mom. And you know what's really funny? Because I feel like I've been your mom all fucking night. What's that supposed to mean? It means losers like you are incapable of taking care of yourselves. Either you're leeching off your mommy or welfare or some guy. Where do you come up with this shit, huh? You, you don't know the first thing about me. What is there to know? You serve absolutely no function whatsoever. You're pathetic. Okay. The only reason you're free to sit here and get wasted is because you're not responsible for anything. You know, whatever. I've been responsible for myself since I was 12, so. You don't get what I'm saying at all. You want to know the real reason I can sit here and get wasted? Is fuck you, bro. Okay? I can be free on the street. I can be free in this fucking apartment. I can be free in jail if I want to be, okay? Holy shit, you're fucking crazy, I told you I'm all fucked up. Get in. No, you didn't tell me it was like this, though. Ah. Look, I just want to get out of here, so let's just do this, seriously. I can't even look at you. Fuck you, then look over there, then. I don't give a shit. Fine, fine. Where's the bottle? It, it, it's in the back with the guy. Why isn't he out here? I don't know exactly. Why are you whispering? Because the guy's a psycho, and I just want to get out of here. Ha! Fuck this! Hi there, my name is Brittany Howitt. I'm based in Toronto, and thanks for watching my tape. Remember, colleague, you were talking to my wife. Your wife in name only? For it is still mother who performs the wifely functions, is it not? While Octavia does the same with my good friend Agrippa. It's very convenient for all involved. What are you getting at exactly? Do you deny it? I'll not be interrogated by you. Do you deny it? Go fuck your little girl there and leave my business to me. Do you deny it? It's true. I'll not deny it. I love your sister. We've been meeting in secret for some time now. But I cannot answer for Antony. Thank you, Agrippa. Thank you for being honest with me. So what? What if it's true? What are you going to do about it? There is nothing you can do about it. I shall send my women to their house, where they shall remain in seclusion, under guard, until I say otherwise. I'll do no such thing. Silence! And you. You shall leave this city. Leave this city? You shall go east to your provinces, and you shall not come back. Or else what, boy? You shall leave the city, or I will have our alliance declared broken. I will have this sad story told in the forum. I will have it posted in every city in Italy. And you know that the people are not as liberal with their wives as you are. They will say you wear cuckold's horns. 
They will say your wife betrayed you with a low-born pleb on my staff. You will be a figure of fun. The proles will laugh at you in the streets. Your own soldiers will mock you behind your back. Go on. Strike me. See what happens. You disgrace your own sister? She has disgraced herself. It was nice meeting you. Take care. You're marrying a monster. Hi, I'm Philip Ben Martin. I'm with Karen Williams at Characters, and I live in Toronto.